Today's webinar is Closing Streets to Create Space for Walking and Biking During the COVID-19 Pandemic. We hope you and your families are well and safe during this unprecedented and chaotic time that we're all currently living through. So next, we're gonna hear from Sarah Clark Stewart. Um, Sarah's the Executive Director of the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia, a membership-based advocacy and education nonprofit organization where she has been on the staff since 2010. And I also have to say, Sarah is a really um, great partner of Rails to Trails. We're, we work together closely on the circuit trails in the greater Philadelphia region. So welcome, Sarah, tell us about Philadelphia and your efforts there and what you've been learning. So uh, thank you, Liz, for inviting me to participate in this webinar. I'm very excited to be here um, and to tell our story. So for those of you who don't know, Philadelphia is the fifth largest uh, city in the United States. Um, and we are part of a region. We have um, eight counties surrounding Philadelphia, and we are the sixth largest region in the country. Um, we, the city itself, has about 250. By just to set some context, has about 250 um, lanes of, of bike lane, sort of miles of bike lanes, um, and we have the whole region has about 330 miles of off-road trails that are part of uh, 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 the circuit trails network, which is planned to be as large as 800 mi over 800 miles um, and so we have um, a fair amount of you know a, a fair amount of, of off-road trail space um, through scattered throughout the nine counties um, and the, the the city itself does have um, some experience with closing streets you know back in 2016 we had the Pope visit um, which was a real um, incredible uh, shock to the city in that every uh, car had to be cleared out um, of Center City. That's our downtown core. So um, that really kind of whetted everyone's appetite for having a closed street program. We hadn't had one up to then. Um, and so our current mayor, Mayor Jim Kenney, instituted um, a program of closing one street, um, but it's only one day a week during the summer, during August. Um, and as far, and the other experience that the city itself has is it has uh, during um, our April to October uh, some period it closes one of our river drives um, that I'm going to speak about in a minute um, for uh, sort of partially closes it over the weekends. So um, so we have um, so that's sort of the context. Now. Um, the, the trails um, are very, very popular in Philadelphia and throughout the region. Um, and when the pandemic hit us um, and people were encouraged to go out, um, there was a lot of um, demand for those trails. And the previous picture um, was uh, gives you sort of a sense a little bit of the overcrowding that we were experiencing. Um, it's, it's hard to do it justice um, to take a good picture of it, but it was easy to actually um if you can actually go forward i'm sorry if you could go forward one slide it was easy to get um documentation of how um how overcrowded it was and we were fortunate to have um around 15 different uh trail counters throughout the circuit trail network um and uh my staff were able to get that info that data and do a similar analysis that Liz described um, that they did it nationally um, and found that um, over the th same three week period from last year to this year that most of the trails were experiencing over 100% um, increase and in particular Kelly Drive which is uh, where our famous Boathouse Row is was experiencing a quadrupling um, and uh, if you can go now, go backwards one one slide, um, if, if, if that's possible. Um, that meant that all these folks were being concentrated on um, the lower uh, the lower right red arrow um, on a trail um, there, um, and um, it was impossible really to keep that safe distance. Um, and so. Um, where you see the, the, the second red arrow, which is Martin Luther King Drive, um, it became crystal clear almost immediately that if that could be closed, um, we could alleviate the pressure on um, the path that's on Kelly Drive. And so, um, uh, 
and given that we knew that um, this was a this was a road that uh, the city had experience with closing, it seemed like a fairly straightforward ask. Um, and we also knew that um, that you know the quadrupling that happened on Kelly Drive was during a fairly fairly cold uh, period. Um, we've had a lot of rain in the last three weeks. It's been in the 50 degrees, and it's just going to get even more stressed um, when the weather warms up. So um, what we did was uh, we quick as soon as we had that information that data. Um, we put up a petition, um, and I believe that was on um, Thursday, the uh, on Thursday the twentieth, and um, uh, it, it it got um, over a thousand signatures. It got five hundred, I think, just within a few hours. Um, and on Friday afternoon, um, the mayor decided to close. Uh, the drive to cars to open it up for bicyclists and pedestrians um, and make that a 24-7 closure. So um, it was much better um, than, a, than a weekend closure and it was, um, it came with a, um, a huge, um, huge amount of support and excitement um, from across the city and um, gained a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of attention. Um, so it was a well, very big well. We, everyone was really happy and you know pleased that this could be done so quickly, um, and we were very excited to you know to have been able to help make that happen. One big, I put this picture in because I wanted you to see that it, how one reason this was fairly straightforward is that this particular Martin Luther King Drive already has these um, gates that can be open and closed, and that is you know that was one big contribution contributing factor to the fact that why um, the mayor was able to do it so quickly is because um, uh, they, they know how to do it and they have the means to do it with, this, with very few resources. So it was fairly straightforward to get to a yes. Um, so in terms of what, what we've learned is that, and, and this is what it looks like now with the skyline um, that was taken yesterday. Uh, and, um, and this was on a cold, windy day. Um, in the afternoon, and I think that um, again, as as I mentioned, as soon as it warms up, it's gonna it's gonna really increase. So um, we've learned a lot from this. We what we've learned is that this is great, but we need more. We think there's more parts of the city that need um, access to um, this kind of space, and we want to try to work with the city to make that possible. Um, we you know in full recognition of the stress that the city is under. Um, there, we have 8,000 acres of parks, of which most of it is off limits, so being encouraged not to not to go to playgrounds and basketball courts. But there are roads in those parks that could also be closed. Um, and we are trying to make a. We want to. We've been working with community groups and city council to find support for um, a series of of other, a, a set of other streets and roads that could possibly be closed. Um, we want to be presenting that to the city as soon as possible. So that's a work in progress that we, you know, are, are have in place and, and are ongoing because we do recognize that this pandemic will be with us for a few more months. That's it. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was great. And then just a friendly reminder, we have built a really wonderful resource page specifically in response to the pandemic with all kinds of great resources on it. So we really encourage you to go there and we'll be adding to it all the time. So 